And happy Tuesday, January 23. Welcome to the broadcast. It's, let's see, this is the day of the New Hampshire primaries, I believe. It's going to be an exciting day in the news. Fascinating. We're, we have, uh, in just a few moments, we're bringing in Dr. Jan Halper-Hayes uh, to talk about all the things that are going on right now and give us a recap on, on how she's being used by the Department of Defense and her task force. It's fascinating. We're going to talk about, uh, some of you may be new and you have not seen uh, Dr. Jan talk about how she came into this task force and what, what she does for it. Uh, fascinating. So we're going to tell some of that story. So uh, I, a couple things. We're going to run a quick spot on uh, the wells. Uh, and then I'm going to, you know, we had told you yesterday we we're going to have, I think we told you, we told ourselves off camera, we're going to do a quick video with um, Justice Enlo Keel, uh, who wrote that book. We got We gave you a link. Hopefully we'll give that link to you again today. Uh, and she's inviting you to an event. I think it's like a book signing book, um, uh, whatever they call it, a book celebration. We'll, we'll see how she says it in just a few moments. But here's that uh, a book lunch is what they're calling it, a book lunch party. So, all right, well, here's that uh, the, the well spot to remind you of your generous giving. Here we go. I so love that story. I was telling someone about this a week or two ago. Um, just a just a kind of a shirt tail relative through marriage, and I was telling the story, and I got to the part where she they said no, there's no water, and she take took the dirt and said you know claim this spot, and I couldn't even get it out. The spirit hit me really hard, and it's like all of a sudden I'm trying to finish the story, but you know Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's the same in the U.S. as he is at overseas. If you um, put your faith out, he always responds to faith. Sometimes it looks a little different. Sometimes it looks the same, but he always responds to faith. He loves it. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, it says. So thank you so much for your uh, generous giving. Now we're going to go ahead and run that spot uh, by Justice Enloe, inviting you to the book launch. They're out in the Franklin, um, Tennessee area. So let's see. I haven't seen the video. So here it's just a one minute long. Here we go. Awesome. I hope you guys can go. Um, that's uh, I've been down to that, that downtown area. They Last time we were in Franklin, they took us for a ride down there. Beautiful area. So, all right. It's time to bring in Dr. Jan Helper Hayes. Here we go with Jan. Dr. Jan, good to have you on today. Welcome. Now you are a U.S. citizen, but usually you're in the U.K. Well, what's the long and short of how what you're sort of stuck for a few days. Is that right? Do I understand uh, that right? I'm I'm grounded for 21 days, which started uh, five days ago because I didn't realize this. You know, I always talk about the city of London, the cabal, yeah. and well, the city of London is in charge of Heathrow animal control. Okay. And they said they wouldn't accept my Shih Tzu's rabies certificate so I then had to find an accredited USDA veterinarian to be able to fill out a nine-page health My certificate. My goodness, nine and pages. Nine pages. And since we, since Brexit, any bit of an EU animal passport is invalid. So fortunately enough, uh, I had a couple of places I could go, and my pup is very happy because there are two dogs here that he nice. absolutely gets along with. And where I'm staying, it their house is so beautiful, it feels like a resort. Wow. Well, you know, I'm an animal lover. Both Doreen and I are our dogs. And, and you know what? When we, when we take her to sometimes an overnight daycare, sometimes they're a week long on a few rare occasions, we pay a bigger price to have them. They got this program called Teacher's Pet, where they take them out of there. They have a nice roomy kennel, but they take them out, let them sit beside. They take them for four walks a day. Ridiculous attention, but you know it relieves us of guilt. We know that our <laughs> dog Gracie is really having a good time. So when she when we take Gracie in. She doesn't even turn around to say goodbye. She's so excited <laughs> to be there. You know how sometimes they say, why are you leaving me, right? But right. Not, not this yeah. one. So that's yeah. great. So, well, listen, we want to jump in. I want to do some uh, re, um, review of how in the world you came to work for the Department of Defense on a task force 
what does this do? How do you know who are the members and how is this information used for all the things we're talking about? So can I just have you jump in? I know a couple of places you're going to go and I even have a clip when we get to that point or two, but go ahead and jump in there. Okay. So my background is 35 years as a corporate psychologist in the last probably 10 years, I specialized in mergers and acquisitions, but what I always call is the soft side of it, meaning there's going to be a resistance to change. Who should be the leaders from each of the companies? How will they come together? How are they going to execute the strategic rationale, the purpose for the whole merger and acquisition? And uh, through the course of my career, I probably have consulted, trained, advised well over 30,000 executives, wow. managers, supervisors. And basically, um, there are some that I have had a continuing relationship with. I could see that they had potential or I just wanted to be a cheerleader behind them or right. I just wanted to know how well they were doing. And one of them is at the Department of Defense and he called me up and this was late 2018, early 2019. And he said, we're putting a task force together. I, I was clueless about a lot of things that we now know. So I really entered this with, okay, what? We know that there's misinformation, disinformation on social media. Yeah. But what we're really concerned about at first is getting a pulse of the nation. How have they responded to the big steal, the safest election that has ever happened? Yeah, the safest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so so it um, it, it was really learning for me absolutely learning. There are 12 of us on the task force. We have a forensic accountant and we have a forensic anthropologist. Uh, the accountant, because sometimes we suspect that people are being paid and yet it they're not upfront about it. So okay. he investigates and that lets us know if we've got an instigator, an agitator, a saboteur, to what degree, et cetera. Yeah. Then we have a couple of very woke social psychologists and they are really vital because I struggled. Uh, I struggled and struggled to how, I, I just couldn't understand a liberal mindset. I know. <laughs> I, I, I tried. Oh, <laughs> I can't tell you how many years I struggled. Books that I read, I was just trying to get there. And when they explained to me that, one, they don't operate from any kind of rational thinking or even reality. Really? They're, they're kind of telling you that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They were explaining Whoa. this. But it's partially because how they have been educated. They have been educated to think their feelings tell them reality. Okay. And if you're not in agreement with them, then the first option is to just wipe you out. The second is characteristic. And the third is cancel culture with heavy judgment. And that's the other part is that they there, there are seven types of intelligence. The two as a psychologist that I really care about are intrapersonal, the ability to understand yourself, and interpersonal, the ability to understand other people. Well, I don't think that based on how the Democrats or the liberals speak, that they have either of those intelligence operating because we, <laughs> well, if I we mean, yeah, it's, it's making me wonder how do you guys get along? And I guess you're going to tell us you do get along. Yes, because we do get along, but they're explaining the larger yeah. population. Yeah. And, and within that, um, 
because we laughed, I, I, I lost track of the thought that, um, oh. It's all right. It'll it'll come back. But um, uh, so it, it hasn't come back immediately. But let me give you the example from what was explained to me okay. that um, because they don't have a rational. I know what I was going to say. Thanks. All right. It was because of the educational system. Okay. And the educational system reinforced that they should react and not think. Now, I have numerous times on your podcast and other podcasts said the most important aspect is our intuition. And you have to believe yourself, but that comes from whether it's a gut feeling, whether it's a physical reaction, that is what drives us. And then we do it like a sound check, which is our thinking, our rational side. And so I've described it as it's like a car. It's already built. Everything is put together. And then the driver gets in. So is he going to turn it on, check the oil? see if they have directions where they're going and then also this is where satan can come in mm. when that self-doubt when you say to yourself oh i should have listened to myself that that is a clear sign that satan was around throwing you off okay and and why it's so important to listen to yourself democrats don't have that they just have emotions and they don't use their rational thinking to check things out so i have described if we were all in disney world you would find the conservatives on main street in adventureland and in frontierland but I if you wanted oh, if man, you wanted to find the liberals you have to go to tomorrowland or fantasyland because <laughs> oh, that's man. where they live and you do. <laughs> and now you do you would have said this kind of example sitting around the table right or however yeah you do your well things. when they explained it to me it, <laughs> it it just dawned on me what worlds do we live in and wow. they are only in fantasyland and tomorrowland and I grew up in LA going to Disneyland several times a year and had my grad night there. So I'm very familiar with it. <laughs> I love it. You know, and I, I grew up there too. My, my, I met my wife 45 years now across the street from Disneyland at the Anaheim Convention Center. Love Disneyland. I used to say that the, I haven't done this for a while, but but uh, that prophets sometimes lived in Tomorrowland, and that's mainly where they did. But we're adventuresome too, so there's that adventuresome. Right. We, we try not to be in fantasy land, but anyway. Well, <laughs> look, you you talked about the type of that's the kind of uh, woke versus not woke. Talk about seers versus how if there's another. Oh. I don't know if there's a versus or. Or the seer no. aspect, and you um, don't mean by this. Excuse me, uh, you don't. We don't mean a prophetic seer, like someone says, "I'm a seer." No, this is a this is a different seer. Exactly. Um, so as my work has progressed, yeah. Um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, early in the days after my uh, interview went viral, I described it as taking the temperature okay. uh, because that was the easiest way. But I really look for the almost universal mindset, issues, blocks, encouragement, openness. And so I have categorized people. Okay. And the first at the top of this is what I call the what? What? What was that? <laughs> what? I, 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 I don't get that. So you explain it. I, I still don't get it. So it's just like I tell people, forget it. Don't even try. Then the next are the ones that, well, that's a conspiracy theory. Immediately, it, it won't even let you finish a sentence. Really? Oh, yes. Um, in fact, I know someone personally 
And I had said, well, my brother had told me, I don't want to hear it. You said your brother is into conspiracy theories. Um, so they just cut you off you yeah. know, immediately. Then the next group, it, it's forked. So one side, there's a part of them that wants to wake up, but their ego is so strong, they can't admit they were wrong. Okay. So they ask questions and you think you're getting through to them, but then there's always that yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. And one of the things we used to say uh, when we were trainers is that if you were facilitating a group, if one person said yes, but to what you were educating or presenting to the group, you needed three attaboys after that of agreement because a yes, but mentality brings a group down. So then the other side of that are the people that are genuinely, their eyes are opened and then it's a spectrum about how awake they are okay. and 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 those people are very legitimate i get a lot of dms and i recommend to them that there are certain different podcasts elijah stream mel k in the beginning yeah because she explains really the cabal if yeah. you want to understand the cabal if you she want knows. to understand the spiritual war, Elijah streams. And then you can also go to a few others, but they are more on a daily news and, and that doesn't really help. So you need to understand the spiritual war and you need to find That's the good. people that are explaining that. And then we get to a people, a category I haven't really named, but I'm pardon the dog there's someone coming to the door dreams got it but pardon okay. me everybody. um i think i'm gonna call them the enthusiasts okay all right and and they know they have to do their own research they're on it um and they believe and they understand the difference between the evils and the spiritual war i put all Anyone who's not in the spiritual war goes into my evils group. Um, and then, and then the most awake, I don't call them truthers. I call them seers see. because they have been at this for longer than seven years. Some of them for really? 15 years and they produce videos to educate people and their insight, and I gain a lot of knowledge from them. And they can be found on Truth Social and on X, formerly Twitter. On your task force, is it only to understand so you know how to communicate to them? Uh, it must be that a lot, but I'm assuming you're giving this information to the Department of Defense and you must get even to Trump somehow. But then is the goal to to wake more people up or to be able to just gauge when they are finally awake? What what would you say on that? All, all of the above, but it doesn't get okay. to Trump. Because one of the okay. things, one of the things about the commander in chief and um, him being in control and delegating it to the military and seven, <clears throat> excuse me, civilians. He needs to not have his finger in the pie. Really? Okay. That's surprising. I, think, I thought you would say it the other way around, wait, like he really wants to know or something. Well, wait. He can't be perceived as having his finger in the pie. Okay, there you go. I got it. Yeah. Okay, that feels yeah. a little better going down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and if he gets it, honestly, I have no idea. Um we how we work together is that we will have zoom calls we will talk about what we've noticed what we're thinking um what we think issues are and 
everyone has a different perspective. And what's so great about that is that it then opens our eyes that when we go back to doing our work, looking at what people are posting on Facebook or Truth or Getter or X, um, even on LinkedIn, we get a sense of the national mindset and often we get a glimpse into the international mindset because it really, the spiritual war has hit globally. Oh yeah, and is it then the Department of Defense, which I guess is the Pentagon, unless there's another way, they're needing this information oh. to understand their role? Would well, be, go ahead. Um, one of the things about our security clearance okay. is that we live as a silo. So even if I know someone on another task force, okay. I don't get to talk about what we're doing okay. and they don't get to talk about what they're doing. Okay. So we don't get to know who our chief boss I is see. sharing this information with which honestly we don't care because yeah. we know that we're giving really yeah. good information so for instance right now i am critically focused on the amount of infighting that is blossoming negatively on social media and uh when it's been a people's movement Historically, as it gets closer and closer to success, that's when infighting increases because you've got the egos. You, I call it, you know, the peacocks are showing their feathers. Okay. You know? Well, so, I heard you talking about that on, I think it was a Nicholas Ven Veniman. I'm not sure if I'm saying his last name right. I watch him from time to time. He's got a, great, a good show. But um, you're saying on that one that when some people, you know, that there's people that have been there the whole way along, they've got a name, they've got it, they know, pe people know them. And sometimes new seers sort of emerge or maybe, maybe they've just become open eyed and awake. And all of a sudden they're getting press. And just like human nature, then sometimes there's this, right? They're, now it's almost a competition where I've been here the whole, whole long. Who are you to suddenly get these many thousands? I don't know. How would you describe well, what you're seeing? You no, know, that is definitely one sector of how people are reacting. Yeah. Um, then you've got the Anons. And yeah. anyone that hasn't been part of the Anons, that gets attention or is saying anything in line with the Anons, they're posting, well, we've been around, what, you know, and they just want to discredit whatever new voice, yeah. whether it's Derek Johnson, whether it's SG Anon, yeah. you know, whether it's me, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I'm um, kind of learning to sit back on that. Well, listen, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I want to get, get to some other areas. So um, when we, when you you tell a quick version of the story where you ended up on a on a UK network kind of a station, I don't know what how you would describe. It. You can say the name of it. Uh, yeah. And and Trump heard about it. So talk about what you shared on that program that Trump heard about it, and he just mildly endorsed you after that, which is when you went viral. What was it that you shared, including what you talked about? Uh, if you remember on that show, you I talked do. about. Yeah, I'll let you just go go with it. Okay. We've got some clip here All in right. case you hit that. Um, uh, it's GB News, which is the conservative mainstream uh, station in the UK. And I have been doing media with CNBC, NBC, CNN, um, and BBC, BBC World Service ever since... Trump came down the golden escalator. Okay, wow. Well. So I am known in the UK, especially if someone wants to tear Trump apart or they have a Democrat on, they definitely want me so they can try and make fun of Trump and me at the same time. And this but, is a conservative station that does that? No, this is, this is overall. 
Okay. 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 Right. GB News. In fact, I just got a call because I'm doing GB News at 4 a.m. Uh, Atlanta time um, to talk about the primary. But they said, uh, your interviews are the ones that have gone more viral. I've had three that I've done that have gone viral more than any other interview. But my August 3rd one, which was, I had... I had been on Nigel Farage's show and um, and I know Nigel and I kept trying to talk him into letting me talk about the things that I finally got to talk about that morning on GB News. And what it, it was, the timing was brilliant because mm. Fannie Willis had filed the lawsuit against the 19 defendants. And I was able to say one, if you look at the federal case, Jack Smith blew it. We thought that Trump might be charged with sedition or treason, but they didn't charge him with that. And he has due process. Due process means that he can provide all the evidence. And if you think that the military does not have the goods, then you're fooling yourself. And I likened it to think about Edward Snowden. If he could think about the New York Times or the Washington Post that gets a tally in the states while the election is going, while the voting is happening. Yeah. If, if they get it, do you really think the military hasn't gotten and it? I heard you say that on that show, and I didn't realize how... Uh, I mean, you said it just like you said it there, but it was revolutionary almost because they're like, you know, and, well, I, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you, too, but I mean, I'm just, it's just dumbfounding. But okay, now talk about uh, some of the other things you said on yes. that broadcast when you were. Right. I said that president of the now bankrupt corporation. <laughs> and that would have been something they had never heard. No, they hadn't. Point. And then when I went on to explain about in 1871, how we had to join with the city of London, with the Vatican and become a corporation. And I, I another time I'll be happy to go into the details of how that happened. It was traders of the British who really? said that, yes, they were neutral. They said they were neutral and they weren't. And they were feeding artillery to the South really? because the bankers wanted to break the greenback in the North. And then when it came time that it all came out and it needed to be resolved, the city of London, which controls the wealth the banks and the trade around the globe and has for centuries, centuries, 800 years. They and this city of London, London does not mean London itself. It means a one mile square part of London called the city of London. Am I saying exactly. that right? Okay. That, exactly. And in 1066, William the Conqueror on Christmas Day Whoa. issued the, the charter that they would be a sovereign entity. They had to keep getting it renewed. And by 1199, King John gave it to them without it needing to be renewed anymore. Mm. And they are immune from any transparency and from any human rights act. So who knows, you know, we know that the cabal does their different things. Yeah. So I talked about that and how important it was for people to understand that we had been a corporation. And then I got to do, I got to say one of my favorite things, which was admonishing the media. You guys made fun of Trump when you claimed he walked in front of the queen. He did not. Think you all you guys do is think about micro 
aggression. Describe, when you describe what happened, yeah. then I'm going to play the clip, and I okay. might play it a second time after that to make people can okay. because it goes by fast. But go ahead and describe right. what we're going to look for, okay. and then we'll play it. Right. You have to think about micro expressions. Okay. And so when you see this, Trump waited, and the queen flicked her hand. She had her glove on, and she flicked her hand. And Trump took two steps, and he stopped. Now, when you see where the queen was standing, she wasn't facing him or the direction he was. She was still facing the troops. Um, she could have just turned and taken two steps and been right next to him. But instead, she walked behind him because that was the optic that was needed to let people know that he informed the queen that he was bankrupting the corporation. Wow. Let's and, go ahead and play that clip. And then we'll, yeah. we might play it a second time. Um, go ahead and run that and see. I don't know if you can talk over it, then you can keep saying something. Well, let's go ahead and. Okay. Here, here we go. Wow. And now, you know, I, I, that's fourth or fifth time I've seen that. Uh, let me ask you this, and, and I might play it one more time, but Jan, are you saying that back inside the castle, Trump had already informed her, this is the way it's going down. We're moving on without the yes. city of London anymore. And this is way it's, what, this is what I'm going to do out there. You're going to let me walk in front of you. And she went along with it. Is that kind of the way it went down? It, it pretty much is the way it went down. And it would have happened a few years earlier but John Burkow, who was the Speaker of the House of Commons, although he let Xi Jinping come and give a speech, he deemed Donald Trump so awful that he wouldn't let him. So when we go back to 2017, when Trump went on his world tour, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the Vatican, that which I also talked about, was when he told the Pope, guess what? We're taking all of our gold back. You're not. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut that out. I want to show that picture in a second, but can you hold that point? Just sure. when when they're walking, the band is playing live. And as they he gets away with walking in front of the queen, and she accepts it. All of a sudden, I hear the band playing Anchors Away, which is an American Navy song. Was that intentional? Of like, course, it was in respect. But the thing is, let's play it again okay. so that people can see. And if you can play it a little slower, yeah, watch can, the Queen's hands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. I love it. I love it. I guess it was uh, uh, Anchor's Way was the second one. The first one was uh, the Air Force song, Off We Go Into the Wild Blue Yonder, I'm pretty sure. So, any fascinating. But you. You're but saying that was mostly respect, but anyway, the optic was preordained. They are both in on it. Absolutely, because they had walked there together. And if you watched her hands telling him to yeah. go, and then the media, oh, he walked in front of the queen. No, she walked behind him and then came to his side. Can I ask you this before we go to the Pope one? Is it your, I don't know if you would know this or you're surmising that by the time we see this happen, this optic, the queen is begrudgingly going along with this because it's been taken from her and she has no power over it? No. Or is she playing along because she's agreeing, literally agreeing with it? She's agreeing with it. And the thing is that the monarchy in the, in, uh, Britain in the United Kingdom is a constitutional monarchy. In the late 1600s, the cabal, the city of London, took over control after Charles I, Charles II, and James II used all the Brits' money. So then yeah. they brought the Bank of England into the city of London. The city of London is controlled by a Lord Mayor. And if the, the monarch wants to enter the city of London, they have to get permission from the Lord Mayor. Really? So wow. It's a sovereign state. 
we would never have thought that we would have thought whatever the queen does she gets to do when she wants to do it but not yeah. not that one mile square city of london exactly wow. exactly wow. well let's yeah, talk just about like the vatican what? just like the vatican okay when all of that corruption financial corruption was exposed the italian police and military law enforcement and military could not enter because the Vatican City is also a separate state right in there with their own sovereignty. District of Columbia has its own constitution. When Trump filed the executive order 13848 and said foreign interference Guess what? District of Columbia is foreign. It's not wow. part of the United States. Wow. So he That's, knew wow. what he was doing. Yeah. And by that, he took, seized with that um, foreign interference. Did he then seize control of D.C.? Would it, is that the way you would say it? Uh, no. Um, no. Uh, okay. Basically, because he declared a state of emergency, you know, everything is still sort of in limbo. Okay. Uh, Congress, actually, our founders were very smart to say that Congress oversees it, but it is a separate police force. They don't really have control over the mayor. The mayor okay. is just like the Lord Mayor for the city of London. Really? And, and yeah. that's that's the behind the scenes aspect of it. Um, but the good part is that Trump knows, as he said from the very beginning, we've got it all. We've got it and all. And then he knows they did it all. And let's talk about, yeah, he knows everything. Every time he said we have it all, I mean, it meant way more than... People would say, oh, Trump, he's always saying I'm the biggest this, the best that. We have everything. He meant he have all of it. It's all documented. Okay, back to this interview. While you're on the interview, now you're talking about the Pope, and there's a picture that I'm I'm I ha I'm I like to see it with this smile because the Pope isn't smiling. Now I'm not anti-Catholic. Okay, this is not against Catholics, but uh we went and got tell them, tell the people what we went and did with six hundred. I'll, I'll let you say it. Okay. So when he went to tell the Pope that because the Vatican was the bank, the city of London was the financial center, and the U.S. had the military role, he went and told the Pope, we're not banking with you anymore. And he sent 650 planes to get all of our gold. It also meant that we wouldn't have to send some of our tax dollars to the city of London because for 151 years, that's what was happening. That's one of the re one of the was many it, reasons. Are we saying that that uh, the the city of London was sending then more, some of that onto the Vatican where they banked it as gold, or how did our gold um, get there? I uh, no, they did not. We okay. are tax dollars because okay. the Federal Reserve is, uh, Trump did make it part of the Treasury. It never was. It okay. is controlled by the cabal. The cabal is the city of London, often referred to as the Crown Corporation. Yeah. And that money went to those bankers. Whatever money we had or our gold reserves they went in to the Vatican Bank. How do you? Uh, how did they get it? If you know, I don't even know if you know it. How did the Vatican get our gold? Because when we became a corporation in 1871, the requirement was that, as it was the three entities, yeah, that we had to use the Vatican Bank. For our, our banking, they were our banker, you're saying. Well, they were they were the, the holders of our gold okay, and our silver. Yes. 
And so we're good. Yeah. Now, there, this picture, uh, show the picture, and I think I can talk over it. So the Pope is not smiling. And look at the grin on Trump's face. This is when they what? Did they go to inform him of that? Is that what this picture is? Oh, yes. Yes. He is I, just so unhappy. Yeah, I mean, they got our gold. And I mean, they didn't even have an army to defend it, did they? Because they're, they're, they're the Vatican City. It's like a tourist thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's and, amazing. And, but look at Trump's face. Have you <laughs> ever seen him look more elated? Yeah. I, I don't think I have. Yeah. And again, folks, I want to say this again. I'm not anti-Catholic or anything. I'm not laughing at Catholics. I'm just saying... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of corruption at the highest level. One of our workers here uh, uh, is a Catholic that we're, you know, and uh, I won't say his name because maybe saying I don't tell everybody I'm, I don't know, but uh, you know, he was saying he didn't. A lot of Catholics don't like Francis uh, very much, but we got the gold. And uh, I, what is it that I wanted to ask you about the gold? Ah, I had a question. Well, it, it, has, it left me, but it may come back to me on the gold thing. But, okay. but we have it now. Theoretically, it's here somewhere in the in the United States. Is that is that the, yes? Okay. Yes, theoretically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who knows where it is? But um, um, what else would you like to say about what went on? About 1871. By the way, you didn't mention Ulysses S. Grant, but he was. He won the Civil War through the, the military side of it, became president. He signed, he was the initial signer in 1871, I think. Uh, well, the, yeah, he was. The thing is that what went on during our Civil War was a strategic effort to bankrupt the North using the fiat currency because he talked the when I say he, the city of London cabal bankers talked the U.S. into telling the people, the citizens, that if they turned over their gold, they got the exchange of fiat currency, but they would be paid back with gold or silver. Well, guess what? We had no gold or silver. They bankrupted us, and that was how they conned us into it. And we could have used the 14th Amendment when we found out Britain was not neutral during okay. the Civil War. Okay. But they also outsmarted Ulysses S. Grant by forcing it to be solved in an international court. That really? made our constitution invalid. And that also subjected every other country that has a dispute with another country, they have to deal with it in an international court. Instead of just settling it between right. them. Right. If we, they purposely did not want us to use our 14th amendment. And so we have, and, and when I say corporation, um, I don't mean it as a business. It's a governing body, just yeah. like a company has a board of direct, directors. Yeah. It is a governing body, not all the things that we associate with a business corporation. Can you talk for a minute about... Um... It's been said all around, and I believe it. I don't even know if there is such a thing as 5D chess. There probably is, but that's a term people have been using. That Trump, they're saying Trump plays 5D chess. He's so many moves ahead. Can you talk about what you've observed or or opinions or anything about that aspect of Trump that he could um, even help well, strategize this? Uh, 5D chess. I uh, part of it is game theory. Okay. And, um, but when, when we say that about Trump, it really means that he sees things and how they'll play out in so many different levels before other people. 
I mean, you could go back to his 1999 interview with Tim Russert, 25 minute interview. It's great. People should watch it. And he was talking about the problems. You can go back to 1980 with Rona Barrett, who was the gossip columnist, who asked him, uh, Would, wouldn't you sacrifice your life for this country? And he said, well, I would, but the public is not ready to hear the truth. They only want someone telling them lies with a smile on their face. It's so true. And I remember him being on Oprah. I yep. remember seeing in the clip, not that I remembered it at the time, but she said, do you want to run for president? He was a much younger man. It was like 35 years ago or something. He may have been 35 at the time. And he said, his answer, I'm pr pretty sure I remember this correctly. He said, only if I have to. And, and I saw in that clip, a man that even at that young age knew he was the solution for this problem, but it had to get worse. That's what that means. Only if I have to. Right. He, you know, and so right. he was the, the Amer American public, if you will, seems to have gone along with. Yes. And, with, and go ahead. going back to the 1999 interview, he left the Republican party and joined the reform party. Okay. Tim Russert asked him, are you going to run for president? He said, I don't know. And I'll only do it if I know I can win. Okay. Then if you fast forward to Jerome Corsi, both okay. in his book and in speeches, he revealed that Trump was recruited by the military. And so probably the most important thing I can say about this is when I hear people go, when's the military? When is something going to happen? It's seven years. We no, eight hundred years of the cabal Whoa. 800 years of the cabal 800 years with generations and they have slowly been destroying our soul destroying our sanity breaking up the family wanting us divided i mean why if you i mean gloria steinem worked for the cia she did yeah she did Yes. The, fem the feminist, Gloria The Stein. feminist worked for the CIA. Now, there alone is why when you're pushing women into the workplace, supporting them, why do you have to make men bad? But that's what they did. That was her and assignment, do you think? Is that what you're saying? I, I don't know if it was her assignment. I, I'll tell you what, Steve. I'm going to go back and look okay. at the videos. Okay. And next time I'm on... I'll yeah, let let's you do know. that. Let's yes. totally do that because yes, that's I me. Mean, let's talk about. It. I'm looking at our time here. We're doing good. Um, where do I want to go? There's so many. Um, let's talk about just before we came on the air. You said there was a quote where somebody was call was cur currently calling Trump Commander in Chief. Do you want to talk about that? I don't know if we uh, have a clip of that. They were going to see if they could make a clip out of that article, um, but I don't see anything any notes here. Okay. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So what he wrote, and, and I'll read the first paragraph. Okay. Uh, the current wartime President Trump, the current wartime President Trump. Whoa. Is our retribution for high treason and democide by the corrupt rogue government element, the WHO, this is total obliteration of the globalist deep state. Now, this is really important what I'm going to read because the people that have a problem with Trump, the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates, the Swiss health minister and president, Alain Berset, Emmanuel Macron, Trudeau, and numerous other individuals in positions of power within governments, organizations, NGOs, military factions, Gee. and the medical field wow. have actually worked against the welfare of humanity. And that's that same gentleman that we just showed. He continued. That, that is just the part that 
is part of that article. I can't believe he said that's a mainstream financial channel, and they're letting him say that. How exactly. does that happen? I know, but these are the signs. That's what I tell yeah. people, is that these are the signs that we're breaking through. The motive behind their actions becomes clear when we examine their unified support for the injection of a bioweapon disguised as an experimental mRNA gene-altering substance to over 5.7 billion individuals worldwide. Oh, um, and so, yes, yeah. If we can put up the link to that, because... Yeah, if, there's a, if you guys can yeah. find that, it's a CNBC article, so you should be able to find it in a few minutes. That's stunning, right. and he's, you know, I can't even emphasize that enough. This is a mainstream financial news network. CNBC, television. yes. Oh, man. I mean, who, it seems like with that, the other channels, do, let me do ask you this, because you may or may not have an, I've been told by some patriots who are claimed to know that the white hats, that would be Trump, et, et cetera, all the, the military, uh, the good guys are now finally in control of the media. Do you kind of believe that oh. either is true or is we just sort of illustrated yeah. that you don't? Okay. No. Um, and, and when we're again trying, are the white hat in control? Are the black hats in control? What's going on? Reaction or action, reaction, counter reaction. That's the way life goes. Okay. And, and I don't even know if that's important to contemplate okay. because when we get signs that CNBC, yeah. USA, and this, I, I printed it off. It is nine pages. It is a no, that's long, a, that's a long article. By the way, let me just give Emily, uh, She, I guess it's not a link because it's a really long one. She's going to put the link in the description under there. I don't know if you can see that until the show is over. But if you can put, Emily, the name of that reporter and the title of the article, like put it up here so we can see it and then people can go to cnbc.com. You can see it now. We're also putting it in the comments. We're also putting it in the comments live chat. But put the name on, too, for those that don't even know how to do that. Put the reporter's name and flash it up there so we can see that. I sometimes rather, David Stevens is the reporter. Okay, put that up there uh, so that people can see that. Take my name away if you have to. It's David Stevens. And uh, I just want people that, that just are watching and they don't know how to get in the comments. So I think she's... Yeah. Okay, here it comes. David Stevens, Pascal Najati. Well, it's a long name. Global U.S. Military Operations. Uh, uh, hashtag Storm Reality in 2024. Wow, what a long name! But I'm glad. I'm glad you put that up there because people will can then type that, pause it, and all that. But it's in the description as well in the, in the comments. Thank you, thank you guys for doing that. That's a that is stunning. What is that? Is that gold? It's a picture of our gold. Where where does it where does it say that is? Um, well, uh, that's uh, that that. Let me see if I can do that. That's wow. that's our that's military. A, military, yeah, they got it. Yeah, I mean Fort Knox isn't that a military? It used to be in Fort Knox. I don't know if it's there anymore. But uh, uh, some of it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a that's, lot of it, so it can't all. Oh. Be in let's, Fort Knox. let's talk about, um, we've talked about this a couple of times. Do you still believe, and I'm trying to remember how you said the last time you were on there, I believe you said at the time you felt like the awakeness was at about 66%. Ah. That's been a month plus or go, maybe two. What would you say? Have we progressed? Are more people awake? Or I call, I, Steve, it is the depth of the awakeness that yeah. I am more concerned about. Okay. And that depth is growing. Good. The more people that are in that group that are genuinely asking the questions yeah. that are going through the shock, yeah. um, I, they are the ones, and it really depends on 
how quickly they get it, what resistance comes up because it's too shocking for them. But I also believe I said, I'm not in agreement with Juan O'Savin, who okay. says we have to be past 80%. Okay. They're not looking at that. Okay. That is not, I mean, I'm on the task force that's taking yeah. the temperature and I have no idea how to do that. Yeah. What it is, is when things are happening, how are people reacting? When is truth coming out and what are the vehicles like CNBCUSA.com to yeah. have that when Trump supported McCarthy to be speaker and people say, but he supported him. Of course he did because we had to see him in a leadership position yeah. to know what a duplicitous panderer he was, is. Was it when you say that, because he talked about him being duplicitous last time, were you saying that so that we, the people, could find out, or and Trump already knew, let's say, or did Trump need to see it in that position so he would know? Oh, oh no, Tr uh, Trump, Trump is knew? wise to people. Okay, He's very he wise know. to people. And uh, he, McCarthy and McConnell, when I think we had a lockdown in 2017, and what they did is they snuck in a sentence or two that gave control to the local county or cities where the border wall was to be built, but those counties or cities had first right of refusal. So they are just as responsible Really, for what is happening to our country? We let it, um, and that was a pressure. Was a con job on on Trump. I want to say this, you know, as we're, as we're closing out uh, to my Christian brothers and sisters. Okay, I'm 68 years old, born in '55. From the time I was old enough to remember, the people that taught me last day events were saying. One day there's going to be a one world government. There's going to be this move and there's going to be a one world government. And everything we, all the laws we passed were to try and or, or agree to or not agree to had to do with making sure we didn't have this one world government. And only in the last year or two and this year, especially by the time I was born, we were already under a one world government. Now that I look back, the, the cabal was already owned us own most of the leaders. Are you, are, you're nodding your head. I mean, yes. we're, folks, we're not trying to stop a one world government to, from coming. We're trying to take them out because they've been here for decades and decades. I mean, do you agree with that's that? Exactly. That's very, very succinctly put. Yes, that's exactly it. It's yes. just like, I mean, uh, the other day we were on the show. In fact, let's just, I better, let me do this. Uh, this is 1994, David Rockefeller, part of the cabal leadership. Okay, put that up there, the 1994 word. Uh, uh, and this was on your site. That's what, No, the yes. other one. The other one. There you go. We're on the verge of a global transformation. He says, all we need is the right major crisis, and the nations will accept the new world order. That's 1995. The new world order was already there. He just trying to get universal acceptance of it like okay we agree no we don't agree right no right. we don't agree and why did fauci and gates in 2017 wow he knew it was going to happen in 2020 and the democrats are just so manipulative and they've got the media behind one year before they kept saying well if trump loses he's not going to leave the white house he was always planning on leaving the White House. Yeah, and yeah. All of this has has been planned, and um, so let me give a plug for Double Crossfire. It is fiction that's nonfiction, written by General A.J. Tata, who was number three at the Department of Defense, and the antagonist is a woman 
who ran for president and lost. And she organizes a group of assassins, the vice president and the president, so that she can then be president. If you want to understand real military actions, machinations, political stuff, this this is nonfiction. Are you, I've never heard this before. Uh, and you're, are you referring to Hillary Clinton? Or are you referring? Well, I did an interview with General Tata. Okay. And and he said he was thinking of Hillary Clinton. And I said, you sure not Nancy Pelosi? Because Nancy was working on getting rid of Trump. So she could move in. She would have been next in line if the vice president and the president were taken out. She would have exactly. been president. Exactly. So it is, it's a great book. If you want hope and understanding of the way things work, General Tata, he's another seer. He sees things in advance. I read the book in 2019. Really? Really? Yes. And it will give you hope. Wow, this is just phenomenal. Do you, and let me go, so way back in uh, this last, let me just go drill down a little bit more. When he took office in January 20 of 2017, I think it was, mm -hmm. do you think way back then he knew he was going to do four years and then be have it stolen the second one? Was it that far? Yeah. Yes. That's known? Yes. Wow. That's, that's just like, wow. He, when he entered in 2017, he said, we've got it all. How, how could he say that? And he said it's so early in 2017 and because he had we, it all. We didn't know how to the degree that he was working with the military. And I guess that's the, that's the understanding. He was trying to do exactly what Trump is doing. So that was 60 years ago. Yeah. And yeah. so... That's why I tell people this is not just seven years. No, it is even, even more than 60 years, but I go back all the way 800 years in understanding how the manipulation Amazing. happened in the city of London. And um, well, we were yeah. talking with Johnny Enlow yesterday, and I was I kind of just got on my high horse and I said, Trump is our uh, Margaret Thatcher, he's our Churchill, he's our. Um, Ron, I didn't say Ronald Reagan. I should have said that he's our he's our uh, Abraham Lincoln, and he's our John F. Kennedy. You know, John F. Kennedy yes. had said and put it in writing, or his speech was that he was going to splinter the CIA in a thousand pieces, and they took him out. You know, I if only there had been a better plan to keep him safe. But now we got another chance, and this time, um, what what can you say about? I mean, even Trump and their people keep putting it out there that they're going to try and, they're going to, you know, cash Patel different. They keep putting that out. And I keep thinking, are they sure you want to just keep saying that? What What are your thoughts about I, that? I, I don't even want those words to yeah, come I, out of I, my mouth. I agree with you on that. I, I really I, do. You know, it's like predictive programming. Yeah. Um, there have been, when Trump left, office they at that point had circumvented 67 attempts when when trump left by that time by that time there were 67 that wow. they circumvented when he was at mar-a-lago and i believe it was february and you can look for the palm beach uh report, Trump did not want the Secret Service to make a formal report. So there's notice, uh, maybe not a report, but in the newspaper or something. But they think that it was a drone in his bedroom. And fortunately enough, they had put bulletproof glass around mar-a-lago wow and maybe maybe on the ceiling too so something couldn't hit from above they 
my gosh. Well, you know what, folks? That's why we got to keep our president, our current president, Donald Trump, who's both president and commander in chief. You can certainly say he's commander in chief. And in my view, he never stopped being president. So, uh, but we need to continue to lift him up in prayer. And Lord knows I sure do it almost every day, man. And I, I know a lot of people are praying for him and that that's no small thing when we keep him lifted. If they had done that to Kennedy, he might not have ever been taken out. If the, the level of people that are praying that I could tell you are praying for his life and prosperity and his family and all that. But Dr. Jen, thank you so much. This is very good, very hard hitting. We need to have you back and keep us uh, awake, wide awake. We need to be wide well, awake. Next time I come back, I will tell you how the climate change, who started it, and in fact, he wanted to write a fiction book about it and who really? he convinced. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay. Dr. Jan, thank you so much. Hey, tomorrow is Gene Ho. Do you know Gene, Dr. Yeah. Jan? He's the... Uh, pro oh, wait, yes, George. Yeah, yeah yes. George. George. He, yes. does, he publishes George. He's going to be on tomorrow. We'll talk with him about... Uh, it may not be as hard-hitting as this, but it, we're going to get a lot of inside information on President Trump and uh, all the things that Gene Ho is doing with that, the George magazine. It used to be published by JFK Jr., who founded it, went out of publication, and now... Now Gene is resurrected. I, I don't even know the story how that came to be, but it's going to be very interesting to hear that. So, well, and Gene Ho was the official photographer for Trump yes, during his was. pregnancy. So uh, I'm tuning in. Very, very good. Yeah. All Steve, right. Well, guy, to you and question. your team, happy New Year! Because I was with you with Happy Holidays, and it's just such a delight to always be with you it is as with you as well i very very much look forward to it you know a lot of them things i do i don't get nervous about it, but i wanted to do this one right today and i was really nervous for this show I won't be, not because of how it would go but i wanted to hit the right stuff so i kind of think we did that i, I do really too. do so yeah. god bless you dr jan and gene ho tomorrow god bless you everybody and have a great day we'll see you at 11 in the morning Bye bye. god bless you Bye bye